you have pleaded guilty to the murder of a 15-year-old defenceless child. The circumstances of the crime, all as described in, in the agreed narrative, disclose that this was a savage, frenzied attack. Paige Doherty was born on April 17th, 2000 and lived in Clydebank, Scotland. She had a great relationship with her family and lived with her mum Pamela, stepfather Andy and her three siblings. She was especially close to her mother and Pamela said Paige was her best friend. Although only four foot eight, she was a feisty teenager. She was a talented dancer and her teachers described her as having a great, sharp sense of humour. She hoped one day to have her own beauty salon. Friday the 18th of March 2016, Paige left home for a sleepover at her friend's house. The following morning, she headed to her part-time job at a hair salon around 12 miles away in Kirkintillock. This job was an exciting step for her. She loved anything hair, makeup and fashion and was always enjoying changing and playing with her looks. She always caught the same bus from East Barn Street and as she started early, she would normally make a stop on the way to grab some breakfast. At around midday, her boyfriend Dylan became concerned as he hadn't heard from Paige all morning. Paige was always near or on her phone and social media, and she never ignored messages for a long period of time. Dylan knew this was out of character, but wondering if her phone had maybe run out of battery. He phoned the salon just to check and see if she'd made it to work. But although her boss was expecting her in, no one at the salon had seen or heard from her. Paige was very respectful and mature. She loved her job and never missed a day of work. When Dylan phoned Paige's mum Pamela, she said that she too hadn't heard from her and alarm bells were starting to ring for everyone. The police were notified and arrived at Paige's house to gain some more understanding about the last day she had been seen. They understood that for Paige to not be on her social media or mobile phone and to not contact her mum, boyfriend or place of work was very troubling. The police began to search the areas surrounding her home and her friend's house, but as the hours ticked by, there was still no sign of Paige. It was becoming obvious that this wasn't simply a girl that had forgotten to charge her phone and lost track of time. This was now a serious missing persons case. Her family were beside themselves with worry and wanting to get the word out as quickly as possible. They set up a Facebook page called Help Find Paige. Pamela posted pictures of her clothes and her last known locations and bus routes. Using these routes, the police started looking at the houses and businesses along her bus route to work. A shopkeeper named Ashley Ahmed said he had seen Paige walking past his store and waved at him as she went past. This was around 8.15am. The police now knew she had definitely left her friend's house with the intention of going to work that day. Ashley told the police although she had popped in on the Saturday before to pick up a breakfast roll, this Saturday she was clearly headed to the deli next door. Delicious Deli was owned by a man called John Leatham. Later on, Ashley said he spoke to Leatham and asked how Paige had seemed that day, and nothing seemed amiss. Ashley's shop had been there for around 20 years and he'd known Paige all her life. He was desperate to help more, so he offered his CCTV footage to the police, which would hopefully, at the very least, show the direction she had left the deli in. Ashley had only the CCTV of the strip of shops, but the police knew this showed the whole area clearly, so they would have a lot to go off. The CCT would take some time to process, but at this point, it was the only lead the police had. On Monday afternoon, at around 12.45pm, just two days after she had last been seen, the news everyone was dreading came in. Paige's body had been found at the side of Great Western Road in some woodland. Her mother would talk of her gut instinct and how she knew on the Saturday night that something bad had happened and was preparing herself for the worst. Paige's official cause of death was listed as sharp force injuries to the neck and she had around 61 stab wounds with over 100 injuries to her body inflicted with at least three weapons. It was a truly brutal attack. 
no one had any idea who would ever want to hurt Paige in this way. Her mother was targeted by online trolls, sending her pictures of her daughter alongside gruesome and horrendous comments. Although twisted, none of these people were considered suspects and the police decided to head back out onto the strip of shops where Paige had last been seen. They were still waiting for the CCTV footage to come through, but wanted more information from the shopkeepers. Despite what Ashley Ahmed had said about his conversation with 31-year-old John Leatham, Leatham said he couldn't keep track of all his customers and told the police he didn't recognise Paige. Although this was possible, it was a small community and Paige was a regular, so the police knew it was highly unlikely that he didn't know who she was. They probed deeper and Leatham eventually said he did remember seeing her. He said she came into buy a breakfast roll, they chatted for a while and then she left to go and catch her bus. Due to where her body had been found, the police were almost certain that she had never made it onto the bus. When the CCTV footage finally came in, the police could clearly see her entering the deli, just as Ashley had said at around 8.21am. They watched and waited for her to leave, but she never re-emerged from the deli. The police had only a couple of hours of tape and it was possible she had stayed in the deli for a longer period of time. But John Leatham said she had came and went and with her job expecting her shortly after, it made no sense as to why she would be there for so long. The police asked Leatham to come in for questioning, as they needed to know why he had lied about how long she had stayed in Delicious Deli for. They also asked him for any CCTV of inside the shop, and requested further footage from Ashley's shop front too. Leatham turned over what he said was all the footage, but it was immediately evident that it wasn't all of it, by any means. Large portions of the video were missing, and it didn't even show Paige entering the deli at all. It was starting to become apparent that something frightening had happened to Paige inside that building. Leatham is seen opening up at around 7.17am and bringing in some takeout coffee cups. Ashley's CCTV footage shows Paige entering at 8.21am, but just 10 minutes later, the shutters went back down on the deli. At 9.27, he left the deli and returned within a few minutes with his car parked outside. The shop then opens for service at 9.36. At 9.58, he is seen running from around the back of his shop to another store next door, and then just a minute later, he runs out again and round the back. Four minutes later, he heads to his car and moves some things around in the boot. The boot remains open as he heads back inside. He was then shown returning carrying a large bin bag. Just before noon, he exits the building a final time, gets in his car and drives off. Leatham returns at around 6.04 and he is now wearing different clothes. The owner of the neighbouring shop said that when John was seen there at 9.58am, he was buying cleaning products and bin bags. A local hairdresser that had caught John just before 9.30 when he was heading to his car, 
said he had told her he had had a nosebleed and was needing to collect his car. On the 21st of March, two days after Paige had last been seen, he was also caught on CCTV in a wooded area close to Great Western Road, less than a mile from the deli and close to where Paige's body had been found. The evidence was overwhelming, and on the 23rd of March 2016, four days after Paige Doherty had gone missing, Delicious Deli was officially a crime scene and Lethem was in custody. Lethem answered no comments, but said they wouldn't find any of her blood anywhere in the deli. Forensic investigators, however, would prove him wrong. An examination of the building found Paige's DNA on the walls and between the floorboards. The police believed that when he had left the deli at around noon, he drove just 500 yards to his house where he concealed Paige in his garden shed. He took his wife and child out for a meal the day after and went about his day as normal. A day later, he moved Paige's body to the side of the road. On the 24th of March, the town's iconic Titan crane was lit up pink throughout the night to honour Paige Doherty. This awful crime had shattered the community and the whole town was mourning the loss of such a beloved young girl. The case had moved rapidly. John Lethem was charged with murder and appeared at Hamilton Sheriff Court on March 26th and again on April 1st, but both times he made no plea. On the 26th of April 2016, Paige Doherty was laid to rest and the pain the community felt was evident, as well as the anger that something like this could even happen. She would have turned 16 just a few days later. Two fundraising campaigns helped Paige's family meet the funeral costs and made more than £14,000 a day after they were set up. Seven months after Paige had last been seen, on the 12th of October, John Lethem pled guilty in the High Court at Glasgow to the murder of Paige Doherty. You have pleaded guilty to the murder of a 15-year-old defenceless child and a second charge of attempting to defeat the ends of justice by trying to cover up your actions. The circumstances of the crime, all as described in, in the agreed narrative, disclose that this was a savage, frenzied attack. In my view, no evidence of any motive has been put before me to explain the ferocity of this attack. You must have struck the victim in excess of 146 times with a knife, which on your account just happened to be handy in the back room of your shop. These were not just stab wounds, but they included many slashing type injuries. And this number of injuries excludes separate repeated blows, which must have been delivered to inflict the large gaping wound on her neck, which ultimately left, led to her bleeding to death. What you did was truly reprehensible. It is impossible to comprehend how an apparently happily married man with a young child who's running a successful business is capable of such an horrific level of violence. Your mental state has been investigated and there is no suggestion, as far as I can determine, of any psychiatric or psychological explanation for what you did. In respect of the murder charge, there is only one sentence which I can impose, and that is life imprisonment. On charge one, you will be sentenced to life imprisonment, and in view of the brutality and nature of this attack, together with the aggravating factors, all is disclosed in the narrative, including the circumstances of charge two. The punishment part I would have imposed but for the discount is 30 years. I'm prepared to discount that by three years, having regard to the point at which you pleaded guilty. The resultant punishment part is 27 years. Those periods will run concurrently and will date from the 26th of March this year, when you were first remanded in custody. Lethem claimed that on the morning of March 19th, Paige had inquired about a job at the deli, but upon finding out she was only 15, he said it might not work out. He then claimed that Paige had said if he didn't give her the job, she would tell everyone he had touched her inappropriately. He felt the only way to get out of the situation was to stab her. 
Paige's family were horrified and said Paige would never have done something like that. Judge Ray said, You claim she threatened to reveal you had touched her inappropriately if you didn't give her that job. No evidence has been placed before me to support this. Even if true, your reaction was in no way mitigating of this appalling, wicked crime. There is no evidence or motive to explain the ferocity of this attack. Not long after he began his sentence, he managed to successfully appeal it in February 2017 and his sentence was reduced to 23 years. On the second anniversary of her death, Western Bartonshire Council paid tribute to Paige and every other victim of violence by lighting up the Titan Crane in red. Paige's mother Pamela joined forces with Kevin Woodburn. Kevin's son Sean was murdered in 2017 and he knew the pain that Pamela had gone through all too well. They requested that unless an extension is agreed to, a 14-day limit must be put on post-mortems to save the families of victims more pain and stop them from laying their loved ones to rest. The bill was then given to the Justice Committee. It then started to go through a three-stage parliamentary process and if it's approved at each stage, it will become law. As of May 2020, it is at its first stage. The charity Pages Promise was set up to help support grieving families with retreats and offer self-defence classes to children. Paige Doherty was a talented, passionate and clever young girl. She showed tremendous promise and had big dreams. Although her life was cut dreadfully short, her bright, bubbly personality is still remembered fondly throughout the community she lived in.